Hello folks, Eric here at Plug Avery. In this video, we're gonna have a quick overview at the Nomad Factory Analog Studio Rack plugin. It's an analog type channel strip plugin that contains six audio processing modules. Each modules are swappable for the users to decide in which order they want to process the audio signal. The AS Rack is surely the most accomplished audio processing software ever built by Nomad Factory. You can truly expect something ridiculously different than any other channel strips sold on the market. It has that Nomad Factory magic that many like to use when they want to give that special analog touch to their tracks. It's anything but transparent. I asked my friend Jerry Matteo at In The Daw to demo the product for us. He's great at giving a quick and useful overview of a product. So go for it, Jerry. Show us what we can do with the Nomad Factory Analog Studio Rack plugin. Thank you for that wonderful intro, Eric. Hello, everybody. This is Jeremy Taylor in the DA, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over the Nomad Factory Analog Studio Rack. This is a really cool, really flexible plugin that helps you get the sound that you want, and it has enough flexibility to really change things up in case maybe you need to do a lot of fixing or if you just want to do some enhancing. So with that said, let's just jump straight into this video so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, you guys, so this is the Nomad Factory Analog Studio Rack powered by Plug Givery. This is a really cool channel strip that's kind of styled after several different pieces of gear. One of the most notable and most prominent is the SSL style uh, modules that it has. But with that said, it's not limited to that and it's not limited to the package that you see right here. It's really cool because every single one of these modules that you see, all seven of them, are actually sold separately or as a bundle. So if you have the rack like I do, you actually also get every single individual module right here. And this allows you to use them separately, like I have the bus compressor set up right here. Let's go over the user interface. It's pretty simple. We have the preamp section, which you can hide and show at any time. This has a pad that allows you to crank up the gain or bring it down before it hits anything else. You have a mono switch and a phase inversion button, which is very important. I think every single channel strip in the world needs a phase inversion button. You have a tube drive section, which allows you to saturate the incoming signal. And then you have the bias and fat switch, which also allows you to saturate the signal and drive it a little bit more. You have the ability to change the metering, input and output, and calibrate the metering. You have an output knob, and then you have an output clipper. Now with that said, after it hits the preamp section, it goes straight into these modules, and it goes from left to right. And the modules that it comes with are an expander gate, a compressor limiter, a harmonic exciter, a steady EQ, a pulse EQ, and a bus compressor. One thing to note though, is that since this is kind of designed after the 500 series modules, you are able to move these around anywhere in the signal chain that you want them to be. So you don't have to have the gate first, you can have the gate anywhere you want. And if you buy the individual modules or if you get the analog studio rack, you're able to just use anything you want at any time. And one of my favorite things is that every one of these has a little metering section right up here. All of the dynamics modules are going to have something that shows you the dynamic curve and what's going on. But if you click on this little arrow right here to the right of every module, you have the ability to show different types of spectrums. And on the exciter, you can see the exciter response or the stereo width control. The EQs have the same control. You can see the EQ responses and the spectrum responses. But honestly, for me, my favorite view is having two different spectrum responses set up. And let me show you what that looks like if I take the ratio and thresholds all the way down on the first two dynamic modules and play something. Pretty cool, right? It looks really nice. And this is definitely something I think Nomad Factory should work on making an actual plugin. I would love to see an analyzer that looks like that. But with that said, every module has very similar functions. They all have input and output gain and a built-in clipper, which allows you to saturate the outcoming signal. You can basically just crank the volume until it clips and then you can bring it down on a separate module. All of the Dynamics ones have a little gain reduction meter right here. And all of the dynamic sections have some pretty simple and easy to understand features. You have threshold control on all of them. On the gate, you have a hold control. On both the gate and the compressor limiter, you have a fast attack button. On the gate, you have a release and range knob. 
and then you also have a high and low pass filter for the detection circuit. All you do is click on it and decide what type of uh, slope you want. And then you have your knobs, which go from 20 hertz all the way to 22K. And this is basically filtering out the signal that the gate is listening to. You can also listen in on that to see if it's the exact signal that you want just by clicking listen. And let me show you what that sounds like. Pretty cool, it's really smooth. If anything, sometimes you can use that for an effect, but you also have the ability on the gate to turn it into an expander, which is basically a different type of gate. With that said, that's pretty much all there is to the gate. The compressor limiter is pretty standard. Like I said, threshold, fast attack, you have a ratio and soft knee control. You have a release knob and a linear release knob. And this is really cool because this is where you really start seeing things that kind of look and resemble like an SSL style channel strip. The gate already looks and works like an SSL style gate, but this works just like an SSL style channel compressor. The release time on some of the SSL channel compressors is basically exponential, I believe, and that means that it has a different uh, release time depending on the speed. And you can set it to linear by clicking this button, meaning that it's just a linear release instead of being exponential where it kind of gradually slopes into it. You also can add some of the original signal back by using the direct knob. This is a great way of doing some parallel processing. You can also activate the sidechain detection filter for the compressors, and this will allow you to prevent low frequency content from triggering the compressor. After that, we have the exciter. This is basically a harmonic exciter. You have fullness, which is low end, clarity, which is high end, and then diffuse, which basically smooths out the harmonic content, making it a little bit less aggressive or edgy. The exciter also has a stereo width control, which you just flip on and turn the knob up, and this will widen out the signal source. After that, we have the state EQ. Looks and works exactly like an SSL style channel EQ. You have a low and high frequency shelf that can be turned into a bell. And then you also have the ability to have an E or G style EQ. And those really work with the uh, high mid frequency and low mid frequency bells. You can see that it changes the way that they look. And these bells are able to be tight or wide Q. You also have a low cut filter, which goes from 20 hertz all the way to 120 hertz. And after that, we have the Pulse EQ, which is pretty interesting because it also has a high pass filter or a low cut filter, which goes again off all the way to 120 in a stepped mode. And the Pulse EQ is pretty cool because it works basically exactly like a Pultec, only it also has the uh, low cut filter. And this allows you to boost and cut at the same frequency with your low frequency shelf right here. And this is great for adding some punch without getting too much muddiness. You have the uh, high frequency boost which has a really nice and smooth Q control right here. This goes from 3K all the way to 16K. And then you have a high cut frequency, which goes from 3K to 20K. Pretty standard, pretty easy to understand. Last but not least, we have the bus compressor. It looks and works exactly like an SSL bus compressor, except for the fact that it has a sidechain detection filter. This is just like all the other dynamic modules, and this is a much needed thing, especially for an SSL style bus compressor. They tend to trigger a lot because of low end frequency content. So this is a great way of preventing it from triggering from a uh, low end. That's pretty much it for the entire UI. It's pretty easy to follow and pretty easy to understand. You have a power button and your menu right here. You can select your presets and that's pretty much it. I'm going to disable this and I'm going to bring up the bus compressor plugin itself. So with that done, let me show you what it sounds like with all of the analog studio racks bypass. So I'm going to highlight all of them right here. And I'm going to bypass them. Let's listen to that mix with all of the uh, Nomad analog studio racks bypassed. Everything's pretty much level compensated, so it's all the same level. What's changed is the frequency and harmonic content and the dynamic range of everything. So all that you're hearing is pretty much the analog studio rack making things fit in the mix a little bit better. And because I don't want to spend about 30 minutes talking about everything that I did, we're going to focus on key components. So let's start off with the classical guitar. As you see here, this is the analog studio rack for that. We have the compressor limiter, 
the harmonic exciter, the bus compressor, and that's it. I also have the preamp adding a little bit of saturation just to help it cut through the mix. And that's it for that. So let's bypass it. And we have the uh, acoustic guitar in solo right now. Let's get rid of this. And let's just listen to what it sounds like right now. Sounds good, but it sounds a little bit dull. Let's try turning on the analog studio rack. It's very subtle, but it adds just a little bit more high end and it kind of makes it fit in a little bit nicer. The compressors are working very, very transparently. Let's try a louder part. You can really hear it at a louder part. You can really hear it right there. Notice how it gets really dark and then when I turn it on, it suddenly gets a lot brighter and it cuts through a lot easier. Pretty cool, right? Sounds really cool. And in the mix, it just helps it cut through a little bit more. So this is with it off. Notice that when I turned it on, the classical guitar suddenly cuts through the mix and sounds much better. So that's the reason why I used it like that. And next we're gonna go to the kick drum. Now this is a pretty interesting case because the kick drum sounded really good on its own. This was mic'd really well and the recording was really, really good. So let's listen to the kick drum with zero processing. Sounds good. Let's turn on the analog studio rack. Notice how I've added a lot of body to everything. And the way that I did that is I utilized two compressors to add some snap. Let's bypass them. It's very subtle, but it adds a little bit more impact. After that, I used the harmonic exciter and two EQs to actually add the uh, shaping of the transient and how the actual kick drum recording sounds. So we'll bypass all three of those. Notice how it sounds kind of boxy and just gross. Activate the exciter. First EQ. And then the pulse EQ. It just gives it a lot more body and a lot more detail. After that, we did the snare and this is utilizing just the exciters and two EQs and no compression. Let's go maybe right around here and let's bypass it. And with it on. Just adding a little bit more high end and kind of scooping out some uh, unwanted mid range. So with that said, let's actually go to all of the drums solo them up. So we're gonna bypass it, and then I'll turn it on so you can hear what I've done to it. So it just has a little bit more detail and it kind of focuses in on the frequencies that are being heard. And this is great because in the mix, it really helps it cut through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a part right here turn off all the processing, and let's play the drums. Notice how when I turn on the analog studio rack, the drums suddenly pop out more and they have a lot more focus. That was pretty much my goal. Um, with that said, I think the only other thing that I did was I utilized the bus compressor on the Submix just to have a little bit of glue just to prevent things from popping out too much. Let's bypass it. It just kind of slowly glues things together. It's not really doing too much, but I like the way it sounds. I think that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And with that said, I will see you guys in a few seconds. All right, you guys, so that was the Nomad Factory Analog Studio Rack. In my opinion, this is a really cool, really powerful, and really flexible plugin, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. 
If you check out the links in the description, you can grab demos and check out more videos on this. Uh, so with that said, this is Jeremy Taylor with In The Daw, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. That's great, Jerry. Thanks a million. I'm sure many will now want to download and demo the analog studio rack on their own tracks. It really has a color of its own, and that can make a huge difference on a mix. I'd like to add that each modules are made available individually when buying the full AS Rack plugin. You get the full pack, plus six individual plugins that you can use independently on any track. You can also buy any of the six modules individually if you don't need the full rack. More details are printed below this video. Thanks for watching.